The latest editions of the state baseball and softball polls were released early this afternoon, and although teams only had a limited number of games due to inclement weather, a few saw their places rankings soar. Most notably, after being ranked third in the first two polls of the season, the John Glenn Lady Muskies received the second rank in the state after upgrading their region best 24-0 record. The Muskies received the number one seed in the Eastern District of Division II, and they'll host 19th ranked East Liverpool next Wednesday. For the second week in a row, the Sheridan Generals baseball team shoots up in the rankings, upgrading their record from 10th to 6th in the standings, despite strangely going undefeated on the week and then defeating the 18th ranked Tri-Valley. The Riverview Black Bears dropped from the 9th rank to the 13th rank in Division 2. Speaking of the Scotties baseball, they dropped out of the top 20 and are now ranked 23rd. And as of last week ended, so this week begins, every area game scheduled for tonight has been postponed. Philo baseball and softball at John Glenn has been postponed until this Friday night. Small school baseball and softball between Meadowbrook and Cross Crooksville, excuse me, has been postponed to this Saturday. West Muskingum at New Lexington and Morgan at Coshocton's baseball and softball matchup have all been postponed until at least Wednesday night. Zanesville baseball and softball out of Licking Valley has been postponed until Thursday night. Sheridan and Riverview baseball has been rescheduled for next Monday, and their softball match will take place on May 13th. Maysville versus Tri Valley baseball is rescheduled for Wednesday night, and softball has been rescheduled for Friday night. Rosecrans baseball at Burn Union and Cambridge softball at Bel Air are both postponed as well, with makeup dates yet to be determined. Well, there may not have been a brawl, but there were plenty of fireworks in addition to the tsunami of runs that were scored Sunday afternoon between the Cubs and the Red Legs. The Reds winning the game, with the Reds edging out the Cubs Friday night in Game 1 and the Cubs rebounding back Saturday afternoon. Only time could tell what would be served on a silver platter that was the weekend series finale Sunday afternoon. If you're a fan of home runs, home run derbies, this game, well, it would not disappoint. Heading to the top of the third, Tyler Molly on the mound, a strong inning for the Chicago batters. Here you see Chris Bryant with the game tied at two. He's going to go yard into left center. That's going to give the Cubs a 3-2 lead. A spectacular season for Bryant so far as the Cubs lead at 3-2. It didn't take long for the Cincinnati to answer. Bottom of that same inning, Nick Cassiano steps into the box. He's going to go the distance off of San Diego native Trevor Williams. That's good for not one, but two. And just like that, we are tied again in this crazy game. Bottom of the seventh we go, and we've literally got a barn burner in Cincinnati. Reds up 9-8 and showing no signs of slowing down. Tucker Barnhart keeps it burning with a two-run bomb off of reliever Justin Steele, making 11-8 red legs yet. But hold on, folks. Just when you think it's over, this game is officially out of control. Chicago goes on the offensive in the eighth, down four, then ties it up. Local Cincinnati product Bearcat himself, Ian Happ, decides it's time to tie things up with a two-run homer to make it 12 even, and that will tie the game for the time being. But then in the bottom of the 10th, much to the chagrin of the Cubs, Nick Castellanos, once again, the hero of the day, steps into the box, and he hits a line drive walk-off single right up the middle off of closer Craig Kimbrell for the Reds' win. The Reds take the game and the series with a walk-off 13-12 win in extra innings over the Cubs. It was long, you know, going back and forth. It was just good baseball all the way around. Was this kind of what you guys expect, the offense you put up today, what you guys are capable of? Absolutely. You know, we had good at best from top to bottom. Uh, swing at our pitch, took the walk when they gave it to us. So, I mean, just keep it going. Prior to the meeting, the division-leading Royals tonight, the Indians took care of business in Chicago against the White Sox Sunday afternoon after winning two of three in this weekend series. Picking it up in the third inning, Cesar Hernandez hits just his second home run, but it was a big one to get the Indians off the board, blasting this 1-0 pitch from Lucas Giolito over the wall in center field for his second homer of the season, making it 1-0 Cleveland. Big news right then. Then top of the fourth, Indians get a little luck right here. Popped down to the third base side by Jake Bowers and some miscommunication between Yoan Moncada and Tim Anderson leads to them bumping into each other and the ball falling to the ground, thus allowing the runner to score from third. That arrow allowed the Indians to take a 2-0 lead and they would go on to secure the scoreless shutout, winning by a final score of 5-0, taking that game in the Windy City. That's all for sports this afternoon. For Wiz TV, I'm Court Zepernick. I'm Kevin Curgis and I'm a lawyer. If you've been injured in an auto accident and it's not your fault, we can meet following social distancing guidelines. Call me. And remember, I don't get paid unless you get paid.